In this video, I'm going to show you the absolute best method for getting your prints to stick to your bed when everything else has failed. Now, before we start, I have a confession to make. Some of you have been subscribed to my channel for quite a while now, and I feel like I can't go on without admitting what I've been doing. Um, sometimes I, I use a glue stick to help my prints stick to the bed. Yes, I know, if you were to look at any 3D printing Facebook group for advice on first layer adhesion, you would find out pretty quickly that using anything to help your print stick is the ultimate 3D printing sin. and means that you have no clue how to level your bed or set your Z height. But you know what? I don't care. If putting some tape or glue stick on your bed helps, then why not? The whole point of 3D printing is to print stuff you want, not to become the next 3D printing master craftsman. So don't feel guilty if you found this video when looking for a way to help your print stick. There are a whole host of variables that affect first layer adhesion, and sometimes, despite our best efforts, there's just that one print that won't play. Like I say, my go-to has always been a PVA-based glue stick, but there are many others that people use. I thought I'd test out the most popular ones and definitively prove which one is best. I'll be using an Ender 3 version 2, which comes with a carborundum coating, but for most of the prints, I'll be flipping the bed over and using the glass. I thought it'd be a good idea to ask the community for ideas on things that I should test, so I decided to stick my head above the parapet and post in a couple of Facebook groups. We'll only be looking at additional things to put on your print bed in this video. Perhaps we'll look at different bed materials in a future video. Comment below if that's something you'd like to see. Some of those popular suggestions were, in no particular order, blue painter's tape, PVA glue stick, hairspray, sugar water, salt water, and spray adhesive. I'm gonna score each method on nine different criteria. How easy they are to apply to the bed, how easy they are to remove from the bed, whether there's any need to reapply before the next print, how well the print sticks when the bed's hot, and how well the print sticks when the bed's cold, how well the first layer goes down, the finish that is on the bottom of your print when you're done, overall print quality, and how reliable the method they are. Each criteria will get a mark out of 10, and we'll end up with a final score so that we can crown our champion. Exciting, huh? To keep everything fair, I'll clean the bed with soap and water, level the bed and check the Z height, as well as using the same filament for every single print. Iono kindly sent me some silk PLA to assess, so I thought I'd use it in this experiment. If you like the look of this filament, it's currently available in Europe from the link below. I'll do a review of its performance in a future video, so hit subscribe if you don't want to miss out. I quickly designed a little hook with a 20mm square base, and once printed, I'll try and pull it away from the bed and measure the force it takes. If you're interested, I sliced this part with speed in mind and not quality, so I used a pretty big 0.28mm layer height with a 0.6mm nozzle. The nozzle temp will be at 200 degrees, and the bed will be at 50 degrees C unless otherwise stated. What we're looking for is something that holds the print nice and tight when the bed's hot, but then releases when the bed cools down. To give us something to reference against, I'll also be printing on the carborundum side and the glass side of the standard bed. Right, first off, let's see how easy each option is to apply. The carborundum coating and the glass obviously get a free pass here with 10 points, as well as in the reapplication and removal, as there's nothing to reapply and remove. Glue stick's pretty easy, so it gets a 7. Blue tape takes a few minutes, so it gets a 6 out of 10. But sugar and salt water take a little bit of prep, so they only get 5. Hairspray and spray adhesives both need the bed to be removed if you don't want to cover your printer. This can get pretty annoying, so they only get a 3. When it comes to reapplication, blue tape can be used multiple times, so it gets a 9. Likewise for hairspray, but reapplication would be harder, so it gets a 7. Sugar looks like you could get a few prints off before it would need reapplication, so it gets a 6. Salt, glue stick, and spray adhesive need a little bit of attention between prints, so each get a 5. For removal, blue tape is easy, but it takes a little while, so it gets a 6. Glue stick and salt come off with glass cleaner, so they each get a 5. Sugar and hairspray needed a good scrub in soapy water to remove, so each get a 4. And spray adhesive needed acetone. If it wasn't for the glass bed, then I think I'd really struggle to remove this, so it only gets a 1. Okay, so how well can you actually print on each one? Blue tape, glue stick, sugar, and salt all allow the first layer to go down perfectly, so all score a 10. Glass had a very slight lift on one corner, so when it gets an 8. Spray adhesive made a massive mess when I first started to print on it, as I think the solvent was dissolving the PLA. However, when I tried a second time, once the solvent had a bit more time to evaporate, the first layer went down pretty well, so I thought a 5 was fair. Surprisingly, I had a few problems getting the first layer to adhere properly with the carborundum. The corners kept lifting, so I actually had to increase the bed temperature to 60 degrees, as well as adjusting down the Z height by 0.07 millimeters. Once I did this, it worked, so therefore it only gets a score of five. The hairspray I used completely failed to stick, so score zero in all the next tests. 
It may have been that I was using the wrong brand. Aquanet is the one that everyone suggests using, but that's not available in the UK. So I thought I'd found one with the same ingredients. Maybe it was just wrong. First layer appearance is how well the bottom of the print looks once it's been removed. Top of the class would have been glass, but as some of the corners lifted, it only gets an eight. Salt gives an almost glass-like finish, so tops the class with a nine. Close behind is sugar and a glue stick. They both give a bit of a matte finish, so score an eight. Carborundum gives a slightly dotted finish, so it gets a seven. Blue tape gives a wrinkly look, which I don't particularly like, so it only scores a six. And spray adhesive gives a horrible finish, so it only gets a two. Print quality for blue tape, carborundum, sugar and salt was all perfect, so they all get a 10. As I said, glass was slightly warped, so it only gets a seven. And spray adhesive was terrible on the first and okay on the second, so it gets a five. Now let's see how well they all stick. First we'll do hot. These tests were all done just as the print finished and the bed was still up to temperature. A perfect 10 for me comes here when the prints can't be removed with reasonable force when the bed is still hot. The strongest were carborundum, sugar and salt, all of which were so strong I thought I was actually going to break something before the print released. Glue stick and spray adhesive both released with about 15 kilos of upward force, so get a 9. Glass released at 10 kilograms and gets an 8. Blue tape was just behind, only needing 9 kilograms and gets a 7. I have to say though that even this was perfectly adequate to hold a print in place, so maybe they all should have scored 10. Nah. When it comes to how well they stick when the bed is cooled down, we actually want the opposite. In my opinion, when the bed cools down, I want the print to completely release so I don't have to tug at it. You might want it to hold a little bit in case of power failure. If that's the case, then do your own video. <laughs> so completely releasing when cold were the carborundum and sugar. Glass and salt only needed a very slight pull, so get a nine. Glue stick needed a little bit more persuasion, so scores a seven. But blue tape actually had a stronger bond when cold than when it was hot. This is not what we want, so it scored a one. And I just simply couldn't pull the spray adhesive test off when it was cold and nearly resorted to a hammer and chisel, so it scores zero. So the last score comes from reliability. In other words, which one can you trust to just hit print and walk away? Again, scoring well with blue tape, sugar, glue stick and salt. All score 10 and in my opinion can be completely trusted. A little bit less reliable and showing why we even needed to do this video are the standard surfaces of the carborundum and glass. The corners lifted on the glass and the carborundum needed the settings changing to work properly. Therefore, they each only score seven. Spray adhesive only scores five. Really, it's terrible, don't use it. So the results, yay. Firstly, the highest scores come from the standard beds. This is because they scored highly in not having to clean anything off the bed or apply anything, not because of their reliability and print quality. Therefore, I'm removing them from the rankings and only using their scores as a reference. In last place with 14 points is Hairspray. Like I said, I probably just used the wrong one. Next with 35 points is Spray Adhesive. This was difficult to apply, next to impossible to remove and gave horrible print results. The only thing it actually did well was sticking the print to the bed, but it's glue. That's what it's supposed to do. Next up is Blue Tape with 65 points. It did give a good reliable print, but letting it down where it's unattractive bottom surface and not releasing when the bed cools down is not what we need. In third place, we have PVA Glue Stick. It has pretty good scores all the way across the board. The only thing that lets it down is the fact that you have to reapply it sometimes between prints and clean it off completely after every few prints. In joint first place, we have Sugar Water and Salt Water, both scoring 73 points. I have to say, I would have completely dismissed both of these before doing these tests. Both helped the first layer stick well and completely released when the bed cooled down. Sugar was a little more durable, whereas salt gave a nicer looking bottom layer. So will I be switching from using glue stick and instead smearing sugar or salt onto my bed? Well, no. Firstly, I don't want salt anywhere near my printer and its electronics. Salt causes corrosion and serious damage to circuit boards. So even though it works, who knows what long-term damage it would do. And with sugar, who knows what kind of bacteria you breed or pests you're gonna attract by leaving a sticky sugar solution on your printer. No thanks. I have to say that despite the inconveniences of glue stick, it's still gonna be the backup option for me when one of those standard print surfaces doesn't wanna play. Let me know in the comments what you think of these results and if you think there's something that could beat these options. Thanks for watching.